What's up, this is Jonathan Thorpe. I'm a commercial photographer from Washington, D.C. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use four constant lights to create a really cool commercial stylized portrait. Four lights set up for a portrait. This is kind of like my sweet spot when it comes to my portrait work. Uh, I tend to roll with way too many lights. If you ask my assistants, they would probably all agree with you. Uh, but shooting in a way like this allows you full control over your image and to create a really kind of interesting uh, commercial portrait. Now, the thing that I do that's a little bit different than most photographers is instead of shooting my key light first or testing my key light first, I always start with my background and bring lights forward. What I always relate it to is my mother was a painter and when I would sit and watch her paint, she would lay paint one layer at a time, starting from the back and bring everything forward. So when it comes to my photography, I kind of do the same thing because I think as photographers, we often can forget how important it is to have our controlled light on our background or our environment and making sure that that plays a big role in the final production of the shot. Let's say we're still in studio and we're shooting today on the colored fabric backdrop by Westcott here. This is our the blue backdrop. And you can see I have all my other lights turned off right now except for that background light. So my first test shot is gonna be with just that background light and hoping that I'm getting my, um, my subject here as just a silhouette. We just wanna see a, a black outline silhouette of him so we know that our, our background is being uh, exposed properly. So yeah, so exactly what we're getting. You know, we're getting just a, our, our well-lit backdrop. We're not blowing out any of the color. We're still retaining a lot of that color information. Just getting a nice little glow behind him. Very, very commercial kind of fun look. You, this is used a lot in beauty work, used a lot in high-end commercial and advertising work. Really kind of poppy and kind of almost quirky. We're shooting everything today with the L60Bs. These are the, the Westcott uh, LED lights. If you look at our background, we have the diffusion dome on the backdrop. What this is doing is when the light comes into the dome, fills out so you don't get a really big hard hot spot in the center and it has a nice gradual fall off of highlight uh, around the, uh, the backdrop. So we have our shot, nothing's too blown out. We're still getting a lot of that beautiful color of the backdrop in it. We're not getting that hard kind of white hot spot in the center because of that dome. It's letting it just diffuse and kind of spill all over the backdrop in a very uniform way. Now, as I start to bring my lights up, I could be running to the lights and turning them on and making sure they look okay, but I can actually control all these from the Westcott app. So I'll fire my phone up, it's right here by my digital station. And what we'll do now, I've already put these lights into groups. These two side lights are in their own group, my key light's in its own group, and that background light's in its own group. And I can sit here and turn them off and on from the app. I can also control the power output, even the color temperature of the lights, we can do a lot from the app. We'll go ahead and turn on those side lights now. And as you see, those just come right up and we're still we're still being able to keep the camera in our hand and stay over here on this side and keep the shoot kind of moving without having to run back and forth and turning things on and off. So now we don't have our key light fired up, just have these two side lights and all I'm looking for is where this light is falling on him. We don't want these side lights to come too far forward. We wanna have a nice hard highlight right on the outside of either eye and let this center part kind of fall into shadow. So we'll take a look at our, our portrait here. So in our test shots here, we see we have this nice hard shadow down the center of his face, but these really, really hot kind of bright highlights. Now we're not blowing out any of the skin tone, right? We're just bringing out a lot of detail by using these really, really hard side lights. So for our side lights, we have the rapid box switch one by threes. This allows the light to kind of stay in a very contained area and not letting it spill too far forward or too far behind. Now pay attention to the way these are oriented we're making sure that they're not hitting the backdrop. Now, I could, if these lights were turned a little bit more, we're gonna lose a lot of that detail in the color because we're gonna get so much of a spill of light. So by making sure we're having them tilting forward toward him and not letting it spill in the background, we have two different layers of light isolation happening. This has its own exposure, the background, the sides of him has its own exposure, and then eventually when we bring up the key light, that'll also have its own exposure on the front of him. So it's all about just maintaining different levels of exposure throughout your finished photo. So again, background light looks beautiful. We have our side lights, which look great. Now what we have to do is bring up our key light. So for our key light, we have another L60 inside of a rapid box switch Octa M. We've put a grid on the inside of this. Two reasons for using a grid. We wanna restrict where that light is falling. We don't want the light to fall all over the space. 
and it also allows us to make sure we're just focusing that light exactly where we want it to be. If I take this grid off, a lot of that light's gonna start hitting the backdrop and we're gonna lose that base exposure that we started with. So by using the grid, we control all that light to a very centralized source, which is right where we want to keep it, right on the front of his face. We'll go back to my app and we'll fire up the key light. We see that light comes up on him. And let's take a shot from here. And as you can see, we have varying degrees of exposure across his face. I like to keep my edge lights a little bit brighter than my key light. I just think I like the way it looks. So our side lights are a little bit more of a highlight versus the center, but it brings out a very, very like kind of three dimensional uh, looking shot. Now, why are we doing it this way? And why are we shooting with these L60s? The biggest reason for doing this is there's such a high expectation of video that goes along with photos and stills nowadays and being able to, con to produce similar images of them both at the same time. I could do a shoot like this with flashes and it would be great but it's not gonna give me the same look when I pull out my video and try to shoot video. So this way I can get them both done. So we have our completed portrait and it looks great, but we didn't talk about is what these can look like when we start turning off lights in the reverse order than I typically would shoot. Starting with the background, turning that off and then turning off our side lights and just leaving just the key. So let's turn off that background dome and let's take a look at the portrait with just that key light and just those strip lights on the other side. That looks great. So the only difference you're gonna see in this shot is you're gonna get a little bit less of that blue, that pastel blue background, a little bit more of a gray tone to it. So it's gonna have a little bit more grays in it because we're not hitting it with a specific amount of light, uh, but it still produces a really, really nice, pleasing photo. So if you have three lights, you can still get a really, really cool portrait. So they're just, we'll turn off those side lights now and take a look at what this shot is doing. The biggest difference again is gonna be that backdrop's gonna go even darker because we're not getting any spill onto it whatsoever because that grid, from our rapid box uh, switch Octa M is really not letting any of that light go around. So the background's gonna go very, very dark uh, versus the way it was before. So four light setup, getting about six different looks out of that four light setup by the way we're controlling our lights. You know, we can keep the, um, the side lights off and just have the background up and the key up. Now, if you shoot a shot like that with a very, very bright background, in kind of a subdued subject, it's gonna kind of make the eyes not really like what it sees because we see this big, bright amount of light behind and we wanna see where that light is coming from. So that's why I do the side lights. Uh, by seeing that bright background and bringing more light forward, it just tricks the eyes and tricks the brain into thinking that that's where the light source is coming from and it makes an overall a better pleasing shot. Because right now, when we look at this shot, we have this really, really bright, almost blown out background uh, it doesn't make sense when he's kind of in the shadow a little bit. So those side lights that we'll bring up one more time here, kind of bring everything together and makes it to a really, really high key, kind of interesting commercial portrait. Using this many lights on a shoot can be really intimidating to a lot of photographers. When I was first starting out, it intimidated me and it's, it's scary when you have all these different light sources. But building them up one by one in the way that I showed you, especially doing that background first and bringing your lights forward, simplifies the process so you can really see what effect your lights are creating as you bring them up. And you can add more to this. It doesn't have to necessarily be four. You can add five, you can work with three. There's a, a wide array of images you can create by using this light setup. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you the next time. Thank you so much.